friends. We all have them. Some of us have a lot and some of us only have a few. And these friendships are important to us. They make life better in a lot of different ways. But here's the thing, do you really know how to choose the right friends? And beyond that, are your current friends the right friends? We gonna talk about it. So having meaningful relationships are important. And studies have shown that these type of relationships can make people happier in life, can make people live longer, and even help people deal with difficult times. But who your friends are is super critical because you are defined by the relationships that you have. So I'm gonna talk about three different friend types that may not be the best for you. Okay, so let's start off with the lazy friend. Now you may think that simply having someone who is lazy or non-ambitious around you may not affect your life at all. That's them, this is me. But you'd be wrong. See, these friends can hold you back in small ways that you may not even notice. These are the people that in high school they shrugged off completing homework and they just copied off others at the very last minute. They are the ones in college who didn't go to class in order to enjoy life. They are the seasoned adults who come to work late and then leave early and who can make a job difficult for others because they don't pull their weight. What happens with these people is they have a negative mindset that slowly creeps into your mindset. Their attitudes and their ways become normalized to the point that you don't even notice or see it as a problem. I remember when I started a job, there was a group of people who did nothing but complain. They were lazy, they didn't do their work, and I slowly started to take on some of the same traits that they had. One of the complaints that they had is that they never got promotions or recognition for some of the work that they did. But once I separated myself from them, I was able to recognize what the real issue was and I even started excelling a lot more on my job. This was really young K Soul, by the way. I even read this one study where these participants changed their behavior to match the laziness of others after interacting with them. And this same effect can happen for other friend types as well. For example, people who don't treat other people right, people who don't manage their money well, people who have a short temper. Those things can rub off on you if you spend so much time with people like that. Okay, the second one is the friend that lies to you but it's not what you think. Now, I'm not talking about the backstabbing friend. I'm not talking about the fake friend, the manipulative friend. We already know that those people are toxic and that we should stay away from them. I am talking about the friend who does not have the ability to be candid with you. There's a proverb that says, an honest answer is a sign of true friendship. And I want you to think about that while I give you this example. See, this friend can be dangerous because they have the capability to stunt your growth. Let's say you're at a fancy restaurant. La Chic filet. Fancy. And you order their finest and highest quality of chicken nugs. But instead, they bring you their supreme chicken sandwich. So you go off on the waiter, and afterwards, you look at your friend and you say, Hey, did I overreact? And they say, no, 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 you, you're you just standing up for yourself. Or honestly, it's, it's their fault. They're the ones who brought you the wrong thing. Now, what they have done is they enabled your bad behavior instead of holding you accountable for your actions. So now you go out into the world, you go out into life, and you think that overreacting to small things is okay. And you substantiate it by saying, hey, I got friends in my circle that, that agree with me. People tend to like these type of friends because it always feels like they have your back and they're always saying the things that they think you want to hear, when in reality, they enable your flaws and they encourage you not to grow. And it's important to be able to be honest with your friends because that makes the connection a lot more meaningful. And let's be honest, some of these friends, they're gonna praise you in your face and then criticize you when you're not listening. Okay, so this one may be a little tough, may be a little controversial, but this is the friend that needs you to pull them in order for them to do better. Now, let's be clear. My friends push me all the time to do better and I push them to do better as well. I think it's great, I think it's cool, and I think you should have friendships like that. What I am talking about is the friend that wants you to constantly do things for them that they're not willing to do for themselves. In other words, the friend that throws their anchor down but wants you to figure out a way to move their ship. They always need you to bail them out for something. They always need you to do something for them. And here's the best example that I know to give for this. I have a friend who's an audio engineer, so I wanted to learn how to edit my audio better. So I reached out to him and he agreed to help me. I sat down with him for like 45 minutes. He gave me like 
like a quick little lesson and it was a really good foundation that I was able to build upon, learn more, and then get better at editing audio. Still not perfect, still not as good as him, but a lot better than I was. What he did is he gave me a push. In that same scenario, if he were to give me the lesson that he gave me, but I was like, hey man, this, this is too hard. Can you just do it? And I'm constantly asking him to do it. Or, hey man, I know you explained it to me once. I didn't really get it. Can you do it again? I'm not taking notes. I'm not really taking any initiative. Well, now I am calling on him to do the work and now I'm making him pull extra weight. And now I'm putting pressure on someone who's supposed to be my friend to pull extra weight in order to help me. Friends like this will waste your resources. They'll waste your time, they'll waste your money, they'll waste your efforts. They will drain your energy in order to benefit themselves and themselves only. And a lot of them won't reciprocate the same type of effort for you. And you may feel like you're doing a noble thing by helping them and really trying to just pull them out of this funk or whatever it is that they're in, but you're really not. Here's something that I learned as a kid. There was an illustration in my youth group where we all had to stand on a chair and we were instructed to try to pull each other down from this chair. And so it was a lot of fun. Everybody's pulling people off the chair and pretty much everybody was able to pull anyone off the chair. It was super easy. So then we were asked to stand on the chair and pull someone up. Well, as you can imagine, it was a lot harder to pull people up. Even the strongest kids in the class struggled to pull some of the smaller kids up. It's great to help people in need. It is great to care about people, but if they don't care about themselves, if they're not willing to make the change themselves, then you pulling or even trying to push them is going to be fruitless. And even if you're adamant on trying, I commend that, but I would at least set a cutoff point or some kind of limitation so that they are not draining your energy so that you can do the things that you need to do in your life. Friends are important and you need friends in this life, but make sure you choose the right ones. All right, now that I'm done, watch one of these videos next. Make sure you leave a comment, let me know what you think, and hit the like button on your way out. Until the next time, it's your boy K-Soul. Peace.